Good morning. Welcome to this week's edition of Yoga Solutions Live with me, Mark J. Aquaviva. Um, yeah, I hope you're doing wonderfully wherever you are in the world, on this beautiful planet of ours. Uh, it's, it's a bit grisly here in Hove on um, this uh, autumn morning, I suppose, uh, Tuesday the 8th of November 2022. So let's get on with the content. Um, yeah. I, I've been thinking about and working with what extension means recently, um, and I'd like to share it with you. I'm talking about spinal extension, back bends, that sort of thing. Now, uh, the way we kind of do things to our body is if you're told to back bend, you will lift with your lumbar spine, um, or you'll lift with your neck. Both are kind of valid in their own way. Um, but then if you're holding a position with that um, initiating movement, then you will be relying on tension holding around the lumbar spine and tension holding around the neck in order to sustain that extended shape. And though there's nothing particularly wrong with it, provided that the thoracic spine, the rounded part of your spine, joins in. If it doesn't join in, then what you're doing is you're essentially clamping the spine together at two very pivotal points that will kind of fix issues for you, for you in, your, in your lower back and in your neck and shoulders. The, 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 the thing that's going to give you true extension, true extension of the spine, is when the thoracic spine, the rounded part of your back, reverses. That's when the lumbar spine can be relaxed and in its curve and the neck can be relaxed and in its curve because the center of the movement is a reversal of the thoracic spine. And it's uh, an area of the body that in many many people is fixed. So the only experience of extension they have is by pushing up against their lower backs. So um, I wanted to give you some clues, some help in finding extension from the thoracic spine. Um, you, you can sort of invite it by working from the ground up. Um, if, if, for example, instead of just arching your back, which involves pushing your belly forwards, if you take hold of that core space and draw it up, which uh, the arms can help you do, you know, if you, if you lift your arms, you, one tends to lift one's core as well. And that takes the weight out of the lower half of the body. So extending from the lumbar spine will be less um, complicated. So if, if instead of just doing it with your back, if you draw the core up, find some sort of natural thing action that helps it and sort of pulling on a rope above you would cause that to happen. So if you make yourself do that, it will help you find the uplift in the core. And then that extension will travel and it needs to travel past the thoracic spine to the heart. Okay, so try that out. Draw the core up and allow the lumbar spine to do its thing, but see if you can draw it up as far as the heart. That's from one end. And that's how most people do extension, is they lift. They lift and um, if they do it well, they draw their core up at the same time. The other end, uh, for me and for many people, is kind of more useful in many ways. Um, it's when movement is led by your face. Um, you, you can just pull your neck back. That's, that's not going to. That's actually going to cause blockage between the neck and the uh, upper spine. But in order to open into extension from above down, you need to have a natural relationship to to, to what you're doing. And um, the, I've been playing with this a little. Um, if you're working with the, to extend the spine directly, you kind of need to um, have your face present in space. A, a bit like uh, 
you know, instead of doing something to your neck, which will cause neck problems, you present your left cheek for a kiss. Uh, that'll be an opening of the throat, you see? So you have an action that it does involve neck muscles, but it's you uh, opening your throat, presenting your face for a kiss, and possibly listening out through the left-hand side, so, you, so that you have a relationship to the world around you as you do it. It makes it more natural. Uh, do it with the out-breath. Leave your shoulders relaxed for now, because we're just working from the spine alone. And see if you can get the sense of uh, creating that space by presenting your face and your listening to space. Presenting it for a kiss so that you find something, a good reason for doing it. But what you're doing is you're opening your throat. Now the thing that stops that from being a crick in the neck is when the chest can fall away from your face on that side with the release of the breath. So then you'll find that the action of sighing, presenting your face for a kiss and opening out your, your listening is supported by the release of the breath in the chest. You can do that to the, to the right as well. So you present your right cheek for a kiss. You do it with the release of the breath. You see over to the right, you listen over to the right. And if you can release the chest on the right hand side away from what you're doing to your, to your ground with the release of the breath, then you'll find a way of extending from the neck down. So what happens is the neck causes its, the extension movement and that can carry on traveling down through the thoracic spine, which is why it relies on the rib cage to do something about it. Okay, so that, that, that's you using your natural propensity to extend from lumbar and neck in order to get to the lumbar spine. Uh, so, sorry, to, in order to get uh, the thoracic spine to join in from both ends. Okay. It's a lot of work, it's a lot of work, it's, and it's hard to access, and uh, without the kind of um, emotional content, you're going to find it hard to actually make it happen. You know, it's a very difficult thing to do to your body. But if you can create some sort of emotional content to the action, you're more likely to find the thing I'm talking about. On a relationship level, both extension uh, from, from the lower half and the t upper half can be supported by the way you use your limbs. Um, so for example, when you are extending from the lumbers and trying to get it up to the heart, it's really important for you to not tuck your chin in. Because if you tuck your chin in, all you're doing is you're using your throat to pull your lumbers up. You're pulling your chest up and your lumbers come with it. So you're not really um, extending. You're, you're just holding a shape. Um, so if you leave your throat, if, if lying down, you leave your throat open so your head can be on the ground. You, you let your head rest back. If you're, if you're someone that controls things from the throat, it can be useful just to sort of uh, disable the controllingness of the head by leaning your hands through it. But then um, you can have to play with how you use your shoulders as well. But the general idea is we, we now want to find out how to extend without using either the lumbers or the neck. We want to extend directly from the spine behind the heart. And you sort of got your clues from how you did it from below, as in if the core can come up, you don't actually have to lift your lumbers to make that happen. If, if you can draw the core up, it's your breathing gear. It's the stuff you use to, to breathe and release the breath. If you can draw that away from your legs, so don't pull up with your groins at the same time, so that'll cause you to pinch in your spine. So if you can pull up away from your legs on the inside, the arms can help that happen. And if you leave your pelvis and legs behind, what you'll find is as you bring the core up, the lumbers stay kind of relaxed. Now the way you use your arms 
is when you pull, if you pull with the elbows, all you'll do is shorten your chest. It won't work. So you need to, sh you, you need to pull with your wings. So that left wing wants to roll back away from the uh, hands. The wrists want to pull in. The elbows want to kind of be free in space. So you want to hook that shoulder back from the held hands. The hands are held because the wrists pull back. See? You want to roll that shoulder back from the held hands. And if you can not react in the neck, if you can leave the head resting back behind you, what you'll find is that action of opening the left arm, the hand stays where it is, the shoulder act, hooks back, the opening of that left arm will cause you to work the ribs on that side, towards the back. And it's the rib cage um, that sort of pivots between the breastbone and the spine. And the way it works to move you uh, can kind of feed into the center of the, uh, center of the thoracic spine to extend you. So by having your arms over your head, you'll be extended because of weight. You won't have to do that with your lower back. If you can use your shoulders to pull on a rope with your hands, then that will help the core come up. If you can relax the legs away from you as you do that, if you can relax the legs away from you as you do that, you'll feel how the lumbar spine can kind of stay uh, relatively relaxed and inactive. And the action of rolling the left shoulder will make the left ribs actually roll your head round because uh, the ribs are attached to the spine underneath the neck. So those ribs pulling down underneath that shoulder will make your passive head roll round to the left. The ribs underneath the right shoulder, if you, if you pull back, pull the right shoulder back from the hand, the ribs underneath the right shoulder will pull your passive head round to the right. You'll feel your hips being drawn up towards the ribs as they pull down away from the arms. And if you can do them both at the same time, you sort of pull yourself together into the spine of the heart. So there's a lot of work to do nothing really, apart from to feel these relationships. The working the ribs is a way of moving from the thoracic spine itself. You know, th uh, thoracic means belongs to the rib cage. So if the upper rib cage, the, the, the true rib cage between T, um, is it T8, T9, all the way to the T1, where, the, where it inserts with the neck, each one of those vertebra has a rib attached to it. And those ribs underneath your arms are responsible for, can be responsible for moving you around in space. They also are involved in, in the breath and its release. So rib, rib cage is an interesting structure. It's, to, it's where the breath and support kind of uh, join in. The chest releasing away from the throat is the thing that takes the strain out of the neck. You know, when, when you're doing all the extension, you might find yourself engaging with the lumbars and the neck in order to find the extension from the thoracic spine but when the arms are drawing the core up and the shoulders are helping the ribs anchor down the release of the breath away from your face away from your throat into the ground underneath your feet is the thing that will leave your both your lumbers and your neck free so extension starts to be centered in the spine behind the heart rather than caused by lifting in the numbers and lifting in the neck. You're allowed to let those things happen. You're allowed to allow the lumbar curve. You, you're, it's almost imperative that you allow the cervical curve and you find support from the shoulders on the ground so that you can move in space from the thoracic spine, the spine between the shoulders, without resisting in the throat if possible. The 
natural action of supporting yourself with your hands by pulling on a rope will take the weight out of the lower body and the use of the shoulders especially when you're pushing your hands away from you can send your ribs and, and the chest away from the face so that the neck behind you can relax into length and that uh, release of the breath can be a release of weight through your feet the result is you won't be you shouldn't be lifting with your lumbers if you are it's because um, the core in the lower half hasn't found a connection to the space above you if it has the core in the in the pelvis the core ingredients of the pelvis can find support from the space above you from your hands then the pelvis doesn't have to be held by the spine instead the sacrum can sit on the feet as the pelvis rests away from the legs away from the knees if you can find that action of the limbs that where the rib cage uses the ground for support and the rib cage lands on your ground so here's my hand if I can give my weight to my hand as I breathe then those ribs carry on working to support me when I release the breath the chest can land on that hand away from my face and because my neck is relaxed it will be the upper spine that finds support from that hand if I can find it on the other side So the, the, the shoulders need to still have that relationship that helps you uh, invite the ribcage to do the work. And that's a bit like the way the hand does that is by being on the ground and trying to sweep away from you. So if you put the fingertips on the ground first and, and then you get the heel of the hand down, not by pushing down, but by sweeping the forearm away from you. That gives you a sense of support from the ribs. So if that can be to do with the breath, if I can land on that hand as those ribs move away from it and I breathe, the breath comes in supported by that and those right ribs are working. When I release the breath, I can release the opposite ribs onto that hand because it's the spine between the rib cage, the, the two halves of the rib cage that sits on the hand. So if instead of lifting with my neck and lumbers I can cause the core to come up the feet if you grab hold of the ground with the feet it can pull the ribs towards the, the feet so you can find a way of getting the legs to support the ribs you can get the fine you can get a fine you can find a way of getting the arms to support the core so that when you give your weight to the hands the core releases to the hands when you give your weight to the feet the rib cage releases to the feet and then extension can happen from the spine behind the heart with the lumbers and neck joining in but passively the feet and hands will do the work the hips and shoulders will be supporting you and the spine can fly from the heart <sighs> I doubt that was a very impressive I doubt very much that that was an impressive back bend uh, but it felt fantastic because it was a release into openness from the heart as opposed to me using my limbs to push up against my back to kind of lever myself into position which is what most people experience to some degree or not or other uh, yeah there you go um, I hope that was useful and interesting you don't have to do a back bend the, the, the relationship stuff is the stuff I practice most of the time um, that's the stuff you have to get good at and you, and you know you're good at it because it feels good feels good and the spine feels free afterwards your neck feels better because it's not having to carry the weight of the head so much your shoulders um, sit more comfortably because you're not carrying their weight with the spine at the bump of the base of the neck 
the lumbars can relax into extension or flexion because you're not relying on them to lift your hold your body weight up which means your hips can relax you know so the, um, finding good relationships is kind of the purpose of yoga practice so that, that, that's my emphasis is how, how do we create these relationships in the first place and it's to do with how we relate to what we're doing so I'm, I'm getting you to present your face for a kiss I'm getting you to pull on a rope to support yourself as opposed to do stuff to your neck and throat okay um, yeah anyway, okay hope that was useful uh, that'll do from me uh, I've been Mark J. Aquaviva. You can join me uh, most Saturdays. I do a, an online workshop. Uh, hour, is it an hour and a half or two and a half hours? 10.30 to one. Uh, hour and a half. Um, no, two, two and a half hours. Yeah, 10.30 to one with a break in the middle. And it's always sort of built around the needs of participants mixed in with whatever theme I've got going on at the time. Um, yeah, if you, uh, uh, you can drop in or uh, you can get regular access to all of my workshops by becoming a gold or platinum work uh, member on my website okay uh yeah other than that oh uh, this weekend coming in twickenham um sunday i'm doing a sunday afternoon in-person workshop for anyone that is missing my hands on and think, and that could get to twickenham for sunday afternoon uh tuesday mcdeals running that all, all details are on my website um and yeah, if you found any value in this, then please um, tap the like button for me and um, share it anywhere you feel might be appropriate. Much love to you all. I'll see you same time, same place next week. Bye now.